G'day mates, there are three fundamental elements to CPAP therapy success. Number one, what therapy mode? CPAP, APAP or BiPAP? Number two, what pressure settings provide comfort and control? And number three, what CPAP mask? Nasal, nasal pillow, full face mask, these are the key ingredients and you have a 90% chance of success if you get these elements right. The last 10% is effort. Now let's head over to Sleep HQ and I'll show you how to succeed with CPAP. Firstly, a big thanks to Jay for sharing his Sleep HQ profile with us today. G'day Jay. I've been helping Jay with those three fundamental elements and the changes we've made have significantly improved his results, which I'll show you in a moment. Jay, to show my appreciation, mate, I'm sending you a REM sleep O2 ring that you can use to monitor your blood oxygen levels and your heart rate. And very, very soon, this will be fully integrated with Sleep HQ, so you can add all this great information to your CPAP results. And I'm also sending you a Sleep HQ hat. <laughs> all right, so to begin, let's take a look at element number one. Therapy mode, CPAP, APAP, or BiPAP. Let's take a look at it. Our journey begins on May 24th, and his results are terrible. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is how it all began. Jay connected with me on Sleep HQ. I checked out his results and shot him an email and just said, eh -eh, mate, these results are terrible. We need to work on them. But anyway, his apnea hypopnea index is 36.19. So even with therapy, he's still classified as severe, and that's up 11.15 from the previous day. Let's scroll down and check out the donut. All right, so what's his apnea hypopnea index comprised of? What are the events that make up the 36.19? So we have this green bar here, 12.46, the clear airway events. We've got obstructive events, 7.86. We've got unclassified apnea. The machine can't work out what classification the apneas are, 7.48, and he's got a little bit of hypopnea as well, 0.96. So he's just got a great big mixed bag. He's got a bit of everything there. So pretty complex sleep apnea. At this point in time, things do change. And let's check out his machine settings here. So currently using an AirSense 11 auto set. This is the latest device from ResMed. You can see it right down here on the bench. There's the AirSense 11 and he's using it in APAP mode, auto set mode, which means the pressure will automatically fluctuate throughout the night. He's got a nasal mask, this is important, nasal mask, um, and these are his pressure min and pressure max settings. So currently the pressure range is between five and 15. The machine will change the pressure with inside that range. So it won't go below five and it won't go above 15. All right, they're the settings currently. Now remember, right now we're looking at the therapy mode. So what mode's he in? Automatic mode. Let's check out how his automatic machine is changing the pressure in response to his apnea. Now I'm not gonna lie, Jay's results are a bit of a mess, so just bear with me while I break it down for you and explain exactly what's happening and why it's happening. So this green line here that you can see moving around is the pressure chart, all right? It shows us the pressure changes over time. So on the y-axis, we have the pressure, 5, 10, 15, and then along the x-axis, we have time. And you can see as we scroll forward in time, the pressure is changing, okay? It's changing in response to Jay's breathing. You can see it going six, and then all of a sudden, look, it's shooting up seven, eight, nine, 10, and it goes right up to 15. It can't go above 15, because that's where Jay has set his max pressure limit. Remember, in the settings, can't go above 15. Won't go below five, can't go above 15. All right, and then you can see throughout the night, the pressure is changing. Now let's go down to the flow rate, have a look at Jay's breathing, and see what the pressure is changing in response to. All right, let's zoom in here and see exactly when that pressure started to, to go up. This section right here, with all the colored bars, is called the flow rate and it's really important. It's essentially Jay's breathing. Every single breath he takes, we can see on Sleep HQ. And I'll zoom in just by pressing the Z on my keyboard, just so it's more clear. 
Now, as the blue line moves up, the flow rate, Jay is breathing in, and when it comes down, he's breathing out. It's as simple as that. And I'll zoom out just by pressing X. Now, all these different colored bars here are the event flags. These are the flags that are generated by the CPAP machine. So the machine is monitoring the flow rate, the breathing. And then when it spots an apnea, hypopnea, clear airway, any event, it marks it with a flag. And these are the flags marked by the machine. Now, let's zoom in just a little bit. Let's have a look what's happening with the pressure here, the automatic pressure. So we've got these two clear airway events and the pressure doesn't move at all. And the reason it won't move with a clear airway event is the airway is already clear, the airway is open. So increasing the pressure isn't gonna change anything. Then we get this OA, this yellow bar, which is an obstructive event, right? That means there's a 70% or more reduction in the airway for 10 seconds or more. The machine has marked that and look what's happened to the pressure. The pressure jumps from 6.28, boom, up to 7.48. And then we get another OA, another obstruction, and the pressure jumps up again, 7.44 to 8.44. We get these two clear airway events, the pressure doesn't change. Then we get another obstructive event, and the pressure jumps up again. So this is a great example of how the automatic machines work. Right, they monitor the flow rate, they look for events, obstructive hypopnea, any sort of restriction in the airway, and then they increase the pressure accordingly to try and even out the breathing, stabilize the breathing. That's how it works. Now, I'll just reset the chart and we'll go into another section. Let's go into this section here. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh. My dear boy, Jay. All right, this is really, really messy stuff. All right, have a look. Have a look at his breathing here. Breathing in, breathing out, and then it's just, it's all over the place. And this is why the machine has marked these UA, unclassified apnea. It doesn't know what to do. Whenever you have a situation where you have unclassified apneas, obstructive events, clear airway events, and they're all mixed in together, the machine algorithm basically just has a brain fade, just explodes and it can't figure out what to do with the pressure. It just, it can't work it out. The reason Jay's flow rate looks so terrible and the machine is having such a difficult time automatically titrating the pressure to treat that is because he's mouth breathing. Check out his leak rates right here. All right, they start out nice and low, 12. So this is the mass leak rates, how much leakage is coming out from the mask but if you open your mouth as well your mouth is going to leak out air as well and this will add to the leak rates so you can see here starts at around 10 and then it jumps right up to 36 and then he closes his mouth comes down to six and then he opens his mouth jumps up to 31 so whenever you see these great big swings in in the leak rate over short periods of time i'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see it a bit more so whenever you see this sort of sawtooth pattern like this, that's mouth breathing. And remember, Jay's wearing a nasal mask. So when he opens up his mouth, all that pressure shoots straight out. And this leads to a really messy flow rate chart. The one above, the breathing, we get this really messy, ugly looking flow rate. And when we've got a really poor looking flow rate, the automatic algorithm has a really hard time automatically titrating the pressure to treat the sleep apnea. That's how it all sort of transpires. And that's why mask leak rates are important because if you've got a really well sealing mask, no mouth leakage, then you're gonna get a nice pretty flow rate and that will give the automatic algorithm the best chance of accurately adjusting the pressure. All right, let's reset the charts just by pressing R on the keyboard. And let's take a look at what caused this mouth leak right here at the beginning of the night. And all I'm doing here is just clicking and dragging my mouse over a section of interest. But you can also use X and Z to zoom in and zoom out. Now right here, have a look at the leak rates for the first hour. They're perfect. His mask is sealing really, really well and his mouth is closed. And then right here at this point in time is where the mouth leak began. But what caused it? Well, let's have a look at the pressure chart up here. Here's the pressure trace. And you can see the pressure starts to tick up in response to the apneas. 
It's going up. It reaches nine. And at nine, his mouth is still closed. But all of a sudden, right here, 10.32. That's when the pressure overwhelms his breathing and he feels the need to open his mouth. Okay, the pressure is too much. He can't handle it. He can't keep his mouth closed. And the pressure is forcing out through his mouth. Now, once that happens, we, we get a bit of a death spiral happening because remember the flow rate starts to look ugly. And then once the flow rate looks ugly, the automatic algorithm that determines the pressure changes has no chance of accurately adjusting the pressure, titrating the pressure in response to apnea. And all we get is higher pressures. You see, we get more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, which leads to more mouth leak, all right? So we're in this death spiral and from now on, you know, it's, it's hopeless basically. That's what's happening. That's the breakdown of what's happening here. So under 10, looks like Jay can handle the pressure quite well. He can keep his mouth closed, but above 10 without any additional help, without a chin strap or mouth tape or something to help him, um, he just can't handle it at this point in time and he gets the mouth leak. So that's what's happening with Jay's automatic therapy. All right, there's a lot going on there, but let's see what happens now when he switches from automatic mode to CPAP mode, fixed at one rate of pressure. So on the 24th of May, Jay's AHI was 36.19, and for 95% of the night, his CPAP pressure was 14.46 or below. Let's scroll forward one day. Have a look at this. Apnea hypopnea index 8.6, down 27.59 on the previous night. But what's really fascinating is look at the pressure, eight centimeters, which is about half the previous night. So he's dropped his pressure by nearly half and it's resulted in a huge drop in his apnea hypopnea index. This is a massive lesson right here, guys. Many of you think in order to lower your AHI numbers, you need to increase your pressure levels, but it's not always the case. Sometimes increasing your pressure, all it does is cause a whole bunch of mass leaks, a whole bunch of mouth leak, and then you end up in that death spiral. Sometimes bringing your pressure down can actually improve your results like we see right here. Moving on to element number two, what pressure provides comfort and control? And many clinicians and doctors all make the same critical error. They focus solely on control and rarely on comfort. A good clinician understands the challenges of sleeping with positive airway pressure and they'll find a happy medium. I would much prefer someone sleeping comfortably for eight hours a night with say 80% apnea control than someone struggling for four hours a night and having 100% control. Now let's have a look at the method Jay is using to find that balance, that happy medium. Now it's always great to have a look at the daily view, dig down into your data, check out your flow rate, but it's also good to check out your data over larger time frames to give you an idea of your trends, to see if you're trending in the right direction. And at first glance, right up here, the AHI trend, you can clearly see that his apnea hypopnea index on each day is trending in the right direction, yeah? You can see that it's coming down and that's what we want with the apnea hypopnea index. The lower the results, the better. Now, this yellow dot up here was that first day we looked at um, where he had his AHI of 36.19, 24th of May. And then if we click on this dot, it's gonna open up his journal. And we'll have a read of that now, okay? So here's the journal. And he's got a flag here, moderate change. This is how he was feeling on this day, a bit sleepy, we've got his weight. And this is his notes. First night in new bed. The elevated upper body feels best with a much smaller pillow, which I like. Got a message from Nick this morning about my atrocious AHI numbers. He also enabled this journal. So we're currently doing a beta of this journal. It's not quite ready for release, but it's looking really good. Okay, so that's, that's cool. Now, the next day down here, is when he changed his therapy mode from automatic to fixed pressure on eight centimeters. And you can see straight away that was a great big drop. Let's scroll down and I'll show you this really simple method that Jay is using to achieve these great results and get his AHI 
trending in the right direction. Down here, the pressure chart over the last 30 days. Here it is right here. Now we know on the 24th of May, he was using the automatic mode. And then you can see the big drop where he dropped it to eight centimeters on the 25th. Now you can see what's happening here, can't you? Over time, he's gradually stepping up the pressure. Okay, so he ran it at eight centimeters up until June 1st, and then he switched it to nine. And then he had it on nine centimeters for four days, and then he went to 9.6. 9.6 for a few days, 10.2. And if we fast forward to Saturday, 18th of June, which is only a few days ago, he's now bumped it up to 14. So on a pressure of 14, Jay has an AHI of 6.5. And I'm pretty stoked with those results. Well done, buddy. Now, could he potentially increase his pressure even more up to 15 to see if perhaps he can get his AHI under five? Of course he can, as long as he's comfortable in doing so. Let's check out his last journal entry. Pressure up to 14, slept pretty well considering how hot it was. I had some minor but audible leakage, enough to wake me up, but not enough to keep me awake. I think I'll stay at 14 until there is a reason to change. I can get used to any minor discomfort I feel now. So there you have it. Jay has found his happy medium at 14 centimeters. It's providing good control and he's also comfortable with the pressure. And to finish up, element number three, what mask? And this is crucial, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, if you can't find a mask that you can sleep with, then you're just not going to have any luck with CPAP therapy. So it's very important. And if you want to watch one of my videos on the different types of CPAP masks and the pros and cons of each, just click the link above. So what mask changes has Jay made over the last month and how have they affected his therapy? Let's take a look. Now, we know in the beginning he was using that nasal mask and he was having a lot of problems with mouth leak above sort of 10 centimeters of pressure. Well, on the 31st of May, he did a major change, and that was he switched up his nasal mask for a full face mask. Now, potentially, Jay could have tried something like a chin strap or some mouth tape to help with those mouth leak problems. If you want to watch a video I've done on mouth leakage, then click the link above again. But look, the, the easiest solution, I guess, is just changing to a full face mask because when we cover the nose and the mouth, everything's sealed it doesn't matter if he opens his mouth anymore because it's all sealed up so let's uh check out his journal here first night with the f30i that's a full face mask no other changes the mask felt really good never woke to feeling of air bubbling over my tongue that's the mouth leak it felt great to have the pressure in my nose and mouth equalized once again the mouth leak i'm pretty sure i will be able to tolerate more pressure with the f30i so i will try nine centimeters tonight and test my hypothesis i love that i love this you know trying different things he's got a new mask here he thinks he's going to be able to handle more pressure so he's going to up his pressure levels a little bit see if his ahi comes down this is what it's all about and it's so rewarding for me because I know Jay's obviously been watching my videos on YouTube and this is why he's trying this sort of stuff. And now he has the platform, the platform Sleep HQ to do this sort of stuff, make some changes and see real results, real data. Great stuff, buddy. Love it. Let's scroll down and have a look if this mask change had any effect on Jay's leak rates. Okay, so here we have the leak rate bar chart trend over the past 30 days, and he made the change on the 31st of May. This bar right here, it doesn't look like there's much of a change. And this is because, although he's no longer having any mouth leak because he's got the full face mask on, Jay has a beard. And whenever you have facial hair, it's very hard to get meaningful changes with your mask leak because obviously the air can escape out through the mask cushion. So you can probably guess what happened right here on the 5th of June, where all of a sudden there's no more mask leak whatsoever. Let's go up and see if there's a note in the journal. 5th of June, major change. Here we go. I shaved off my beard of 60 years yesterday. Jay, how could you buddy? Why did you do it? <laughs> 60 years oh mate that must have been like cutting off one of your balls buddy <laughs> now good for you mate these are just some of the sacrifices you guys need to make if you want to get great results 
I'm sure it was a really difficult decision shaving off your beard, Jay, after 60 years. But at the end of the day, mate, it was the right call and it dramatically improved your leak rates, which will go a long way to improving your overall apnea control because it means all that pressure is gonna stay inside the mask where it needs to be instead of leaking out through the sides where your beard once was. <laughs> and I'm sure your missus is probably happy about it as well, or mister. <laughs> the bottom line is this. The reason people fail CPAP is not because it's hard. It's terrible advice and education. Wrong therapy mode, incorrect pressure settings, poor mask choice. They're your three elements, guys. Get those three things right and you are on the road to success. Create a free Sleep HQ account like Jay and learn how therapy changes impact your results. You never know, one change might make all the difference. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon, bye. G'day mates, this video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.